Hey guys, this is Miposki. I'm finally doing the long-awaited Meepo tutorial people have been asking for in celebration of 10,000 followers on Twitch. Thanks again. This is my first guide ever, so bear with me. Uh, by the end of this video, hopefully you'll be able to start stomping games, whether it be low or high MMR. There's a variety of things that I'm looking to cover and hopefully teach or at least some way convey uh, a reliable game plan so you can consistently win with this hero. So uh, let's get started. Alright, let's go over hotkeys. For spells in general, I use everything on regular cast. I use poof on quick cast. Whether you use net or not, that's up to you. For your main hero, I have it on 2. For all controlled units, that's 4. Meaning when you press 4, all meeples will be selected. Over here, you'll see all other units. That means when I press 3... All other units aside from the main Meepo will be selected, including a Manta, if you so buy that item. Over here, you have this control group area. This is very important. Your next unit should be set to tab. If you decide to use something else, go ahead, but I wouldn't recommend it. I have 5, 6, 7, 8 set up. What 5 does, it's going to select all Meepos that are not the Mantas and not the main. So only these three other Meepos. This is what I set it to be. When I press 6, it's Meepo 1 and 2. And when I press 7, it's Meepo 3 and 4. This is great for farming and just splitting up. Makes it easier. Something you're also going to want to do is hotkey each individual Meepo. I have mine on B, N, M, and comma. That'd be Meepo 5. I don't use it that often. Usually game's over before I get 25. But B, N, M. This is great. Against certain heroes like Tiny or any other AoE stun disabler. Let's see, I'm going on this Tiny. I throw a net at him. Run at him. He's going to avalanche, obviously. Oh, I fucked that one up, but obviously he's going to avalanche, so I can just micro this B over here, and I can hit that second nut to keep him locked down to make sure he doesn't get away with the blink or whatever other mechanic he has. This is also great for farming. Just double tap each one and split them around the map, and uh, your Meepo micro will improve drastically. I recommend setting up all those hotkeys. Another thing regarding the hotkeys you set up for your individual Meepos, meaning Meepo 2, 3, and 4, as again, mine are B and M, and they're in straight line and sequence on my keyboard, making it very easy to follow which Meepo's taking damage in a fight. Uh, if I were to get into a fight, I could clearly see Meepo 2's taking damage, easily press B and micro him away, and hit him with the net on 2. And it just makes it so much easier to track Meepo's, understanding if you had an Axe, uh, for say, you could also dig. It just It's much easier to track your Meepos and make sure you set them up in a sequence that you understand and that you're able to keep track of which Meepo is on each hotkey. Alright, very quickly let's go over Blink Poofing. It's probably the simplest Meepo mechanic, people overcomplicate it. I think now that your hotkeys are set up, all you need to do is just press Tab Poof 3-4 times depending on what level you are. So all you need to do is click on this tiny, Tab Poof, and Blink. And that's all there is to it. It's very, very easy, very, very simple. Five minutes of practice, and you'll be able to get it down and do it consistently. Uh, you might mess up a few times in game, but over time, it'll become uh, muscle memory to you. One more thing to make your Meepo micro a little bit easier. Instead of having to tab through all your Meepos to find whichever one has net off cooldown, there is a command that you can do, and that is... Dota underscore player underscore smart multi-unit cast and then just type true. What this does is instead of having to tab through each Meepo to net, if you have them all selected, you can just stay on the main Meepo and it will find the next available and it will cycle through them without even having to tab through. So uh, definitely use that. I don't think many people know about the command, so you know, keep it a secret. One more quick little trick on Meepo. I would call it a bug, but it's in the game, so whatever. If you buy Boots Travels, you can teleport your clones. You cannot teleport the main Meepo, you can teleport him. And then you can sell the Travels for the full price. So you can essentially just move around the map infinitely uh, with this. If you say so. As long as you always sell, you just need 2,500 gold, you can sell it, and you can basically be anywhere on the map. Uh, as long as you're in range and you do not use your main Meepo. If you use the main Meepo, you'll lose the ability to sell it for the full price, so... If you're going to abuse this, make sure you use your clone. Uh, it's been in the game for years. I don't know how it's not patched, but it's a feature at this point. So, you know, use it and abuse it. All 
All right, let's go over the item build and skill build I like to use. This is generally the skill build that I will use. I will max ransack, put one in poof, and put one in net, and then I'll start scaling stats. I, if I need more in net, I will skill net. I almost never skill poof until everything else is max, net, as well as stats. Poof, in my opinion, is just not that great. I use it mainly for traveling around the map. You don't farm that fast with it. You don't really have the mana to sustain early game to farm that fast with it. As well as the fact that most heroes in the game at this point have an AoE stun, AoE silence, or just some way to, you know, disable you from getting all your poofs off in a team fight. You do more damage just right clicking, and you heal more with ransack. I think it's better to just man fight. Like it. Going into your items, if you need, if they have high burst heroes, whether it's Savan, Pango, Shaker, maybe a Wyvern, maybe a Tiny, maybe a Timber, Sand King, you can get a Dragon Lance. Uh, I rec, I, I only get one. I don't think you need more than two. It has good stats, but there's better items and there's better things that you can buy. So, you know, if you need it, you buy it. Usually my first item I get is the Fusal Blade. This item's great. I think it's highly underrated on a Meepo. And I think it's probably one of the best items you can buy in the early game. Uh, the main perks of this item is it's got a great buildup. It's relatively cheap, 2,500 gold. Uh, 1,000 gold for, for the Blade of Alacrity, good buildup, and it does a lot of damage. I mean, you're doing 40 damage per mana burned, um, and it's just great for overall for catching people out and allowing you to play with your main Meepo while your others farm to apply pressure on the map. Uh, you can do the Dragonlance Blink build if you want. I'm not the, I'm not a fan of it. I think hey, this build's much better. It allows you to apply a lot more pressure, as well as the fact that Meepo is what I consider a priority number one hero. I put him in the same category as, say, uh, who do we got? A hero like OD, a hero like Huskar, a hero like Alk. These are all heroes that you want to blow up early at the beginning of the fight. You want to drop your big spells on them, and you want to fucking kill them. Meepo is in the same category as these heroes. Meaning, team fights can be difficult playing with all three Meepos. Like that idea. What this build allows you to do is you can utilize a playstyle where you only play with his main Meepo, who does a lot of damage. I mean, 154, 26 armor, as well as the Ransack, the extra damage from Manta, and the Diffusal Mana Burn damage. Like you do that. a lot of damage, and you're very, very obnoxious, and you can run around the back line. Good, as well as the fact that it's very, very hard to go on the main Meepo. Because all these big counters, all these heroes that we consider counters, you know, Seven, Wyvern, Pango, Earthshaker, they all have one thing in common. They want to use their big spells on all of your Meepos. Seven wants to cleave all of you with his Storm Hammer. Wyvern wants to get a big curse. Pango wants to control the Earth Roll. And Shaker wants to Echo Slam all your Meepos. So if I'm only here with my main Meepo, they just kind of fucking stand here doing nothing. They can either wait for me to commit, which I won't if they still have their spells, or they have to make a decision and they're under pressure. They can use their spells on my team, which means that now that they're on cooldown, I can poof it on my Meepos and clean up the fight. It's super easy. And as well as, yep. you could still just run into supports. Oh, Wyvern's here at the back line. Seven, they're fighting up here. Hey, Match this guy and, you know, he's going to die or he's going to use spells. He's got to do something. <laughs> this build is, it's pretty foolproof. As long as you don't let them get their big spells on all your meepos, it's pretty hard for them to fight you. These guys are farming, you're healing up the ransack, and you're tanky as hell. So it's pretty difficult. So yeah, that's why I like this build, this item, this play style. And uh, I'll go over a replay to show you exactly how to utilize it and how to uh, how to use, utilize it to its fullest potential. All right, I finally found a replay that worked. Uh, it was very difficult. Most of the games ended in like 20 minutes. This one somewhat did as well, but I believe it was somewhat close uh, for a good chunk of the game. So we'll go over this one real quick. Their heroes. In this game, it's kind of annoying because our team, we don't have much initiation. Our heroes are very slow, and we don't have a stun for whether it be killing Pango, uh, CM, or maybe even Razor. So let's jump right into it. This is a pretty decent replay. I think it uh, it displays a strategy I like to use fairly well. Alright, safe lane meeple this game. I'll explain safe lane meeple and why I play it. I've been playing it a lot lately, and I've had a lot of success. Generally, my problem with mid Meepo is I compare it to having like a mid Medusa. It's very slow, you need items and you need time to get online. The problem is that a lot of the time so does your carry and uh, sometimes so does your offlaner. So you're kind of in this greedy position where for the first 10 minutes you can't really make many plays. 
and the enemy team has many more opportunities to gain an advantage. So if safely Meepo just makes it easier because you have an active mid laner, this game profit, not not the best, but also not the worst. Uh, regardless, that's my opinion on why I like the safe lane Meepo. I've been playing it a lot lately, as well as the fact that mid lane is where mo of, most of Meepo's worst counters reside. You get Huskard, you get Batrider, you get Shadow Fiend, uh, you get Viper, you get these really annoying heroes that you can't really lane against. In the safe lane, generally it's not the case. You get put against Razor a lot, but I don't think Razor's that's good against Meepo, especially after level 4. So, either way, let's start it. This in the bag. Just 30 seconds now. Remember, your main goal in the laning stage almost always is just to get level 4. Level 4 is always your main goal on Meepo. Gold doesn't matter too much because once you're level 4, your your farm speed doubles. So as long as you get XP and don't get harassed out, you're doing pretty good. Playing somewhat boring. You could trade because you have high armor. Yada yada yada. These are things you'll learn just by playing. I'm more interested in the farming and the mid game rotations. So here we go. I'm about to get level 4 off this creep. And immediately, I'm going to go fight Razor. Because now, our lane is much stronger. Our lane just doubled in power, and now we have kill potential on them. Uh, you can reset with the main Meeple by TPing him back. You can buy regen for the second if you need. Always abuse this TP. Uh, Razor would die too if I hit the net, but either way, get a free kill. I think I feed here. This was a bit of miscommunication. I had wanted to kill him, but Dawn went to pull the lane. Uh, it was my bad. I wasn't paying attention. I thought he was coming back, but he went to pull. Either way. This is somewhat disastrous because I used my TP, so I'm going to buy smoke, go right back, and continue farming. At this point, I just want to build my advantage. I think I tell Dawn to leave pretty soon because it's Dawnbreaker 5. She doesn't do much against Razor. So now I'm just going to push the wave and farm the jungle. Rinse and repeat. And I want to get my first big item. I want to get my Diffusal Blade and I want level 11. Once you're level 6 with 3 in Ransack and you have a Wraith Band Treads, you can start setting your Meepo to farm. And what's great about this is you can... A big important thing... What the hell? An important thing about Meepo is you don't want to lose your safe lane tower because that gives them access to the jungle. So by f having this guy farm, I can safely stay in this lane because if they do rotate any heroes, I can just poof out to safety and uh, you know potentially avoid a gank or, uh, or in best case scenario, continue defending my safe lane tower and getting lane XP as well as jungle XP. And this Meepo with three and Ransack and the high agility and armor you have, you can basically just AFK, like click him to each camp. It's, it's not very hard, it's pretty simple as long as you just pay attention. They go for a gank here, I see them TPing in, because I have a ward, and I just dip, I'm out. And their play and their play fails. I think they somewhat pushed me out of the jungle here. And I'm just gonna go right back, because I want to defend my tower. I don't want my tower to die. If my tower dies, the game gets hard. They try to make this play again, again, you'll see. My Dawnbreaker kind of saved me here. And Tiny kind of fucked up, but I can just poof out. And I'm out. At this point, we probably lose our tower, because I think my team feeds. So instead of defending, uh, instead of defending bot, I'll go defend mid. And right back to farming. You want to make sure you're not, like, AFK farming. You want to make sure you're defending towers and trying to apply some pressure. Push out the waves. When they're hitting your towers, one, two heroes go there, show up. You know, make them feel a little bit scared. Whatever. Now I'm going to start farming Ancients, because we lost our bottom tower, we don't have vision, I'm scared to be here now, I don't know where they are, I see Pango Razor, but the rest of them are missing. Uh, oh, I forgot about this play. So what happens here with the Diffusal Blade? Razor is really, really far up. Pango showing, so I'm somewhat okay making this play, because Dawnbreaker and Marana are here. So it's unlikely that I'll die, even though I think I do. So I'm saying go! And he's just dead. Really, really easy. Make plays with your team when you can. And go right back to farming. My team's doing a little bit more feeding. I don't know what they're doing, but whatever. I'm 
going for the Manta this game because they have CM Frostbite, and when playing with my main Meeple, that's an easy way to lock me down, as well as the Tiny Avalanche. If you Manta, it's hard for him to toss you with the follow-up because he might toss an Illusion, as well as Pango. I mean, you know, it's, it's good for the Dispel. Whatever. I was going to make a play on Tiny, but I don't know where they are. They might TP, they might not, so... I don't make this play, just right back to farming. Now I'm level 10. Once again, Razor's too far up, I TP in. This play doesn't go exactly as planned, but what can you do? We kill the Razor. But CM gets off a full ulti and a rip pango comes in. We have no cancel for CM, so I'll just die here. But I think my team cleans it up pretty nicely. So whatever, what can you do? But will it follow the quest the same for ultimate threat? glory? There comes the new hoods. For Radiance Middle Tower. The true heroes are the ones Typical who immortal game. Somebody way. DCs, you know, in the middle of it because they need to go do something. Whatever. Again, just keep farming as much as you can. There's not many plays to make. I'm scared to go into their team. They have the CM, they have the Pango, they have Razor. Their team's kind of hard to walk into because they have good counter initiation. For me, at least. And we have no really good initiation. We have good, it, it, this is kind of a Mexican standoff kind of game because it's hard to go into us, it's hard to go into them. So my only play is I'm just going to farm, and when I see an opportunity, I see an opportunity. So let's continue. I think things kind of slowed down. Here we go. This is a good team fight. CM has used her ulti. This is a key spell, so I'm right now I'm looking at this fight, deciding if I want to go. I'm not going to head over yet because, obviously, Pango's still around. I mean, Razor's DC'd, but I think he comes back anyway. So I'm just going to keep farming. And now I head to this fight. Pango used roll. No CM ulti. So I'm going to sit here and wait. My team's kind of dying. I don't want to go in yet. I don't see a good opportunity here. There's still roll. Razor's back in the game. So I'm going to wait for a good opportunity to go in. Yes. <laughs> and now it's go time, I'm gonna start. But I only have the one Meepo here so far. Gonna bring in the others. This guy's clearly not dying, so I'm gonna reset this. I'm still here, lurking around. And here comes Dawnbreaker. Now this fight's won. Get the one kill. We get a third kill. And this is where the defuse was great. Defuse will him. And this guy's dead too. An easy ultra kill. It's as easy as just, just wait for the right opportunities and make sure they use their key spells. Even just me being there is somewhat threatening because obviously they're thinking, okay, there's Meepo's here. We don't want to commit too hard. But my team is also still aggressing on Marana, Viper, whoever. So they kind of have to use their spells. So I can just kind of sit here and wait and chill and do a little poke damage. And then once they commit their spells, I can start poofing in my uh, my clones. And it's an easy cleanup. It's it's hard for them to fight. So despite them having pretty decent heroes against Meepo and Tiny, Pango, and CM, Sniper, Razor, not so much. But these three heroes, uh, it's hard for them to commit on me because I only have the one Meepo. And if they use all their spells on my main Meepo, I'll just poof in the others and I'll heal the Fransack. Hard to kill. <laughs> Uh, go right back to the Meepo. Should look to their bottom tower. Now I'm going to start playing more aggressively, because with this Manta and the Aegis, it's hard for them to kill me twice. To make an attempt. I live somehow. Probably shouldn't have. Here we go, another fight. CM used her ulti. That's great. I think Pango used his roll already as well, before. I think Pango used his roll when I was down here. Okay, he did not use... Oh, he did use the roll. Okay, so no roll on him either. This fight doesn't exactly go our way. But they used all their big spells. There's no roll, no CM ulti. Razor's ult's running out. So I'm looking at this fight and I'm thinking, I have Aegis, I'm pretty strong. We can take this fight. So I'm gonna go start it. I die the once, but it's okay. We kill their sniper. We kill their Razor. And we kill their Pango. It's all about them using their key spells. If their key spells aren't there, you're the strongest hero in the game. 
So despite us being down two heroes, it's still a pretty good and easy fight. Right back to farming. I want to push out waves with my Manta with my main Meepo. Another fight, I don't need to be there. Close to Scotty. At this point, we're pretty much stronger with them, but I just want to fight with this main clone. Because even though I'm here, they still have all their spells. They have the Pango, they have the Tiny, they have the CM. So going into this fight, CM's out of it. Tango uses his roll. He already hit me, and it's going to take him a while to come back, so I can kill him. And now they lack the damage. I think I live with like 1 HP here. Help him there, and then boofing this guy. Easy cleanup, and at this point the game's kind of over. They, they lack damage and we're too far ahead. Prophet's jacked, I'm jacked. I think I just feed here. Yeah, you can see why their team is so threatening with these two heroes. The CM ult does so much damage. Uh, that was a bit of a feed. My team was nowhere near, so that's on me regardless. Don't want to fight that. At this point, my Prophet's kind of carrying the game. But either way, my game plan's still in full effect. Use the Manta to shove out lanes. I think a little fight breaks out here. I think we end up... I don't think we end up taking this fight. And I think we get out. Oh, they can go back in. Alright. Bit of a strange feed out of Tiny there. I don't know what he was doing, but whatever. And now we can just start. Now the, at this point, the entire map is ours. If anyone walks out, they're going to die. Prophet's jacked. I'm jacked. I mean, Viper. He's a Viper. His net worth doesn't really matter. Let's keep going. Roche is coming up soon. I don't even think we end up taking it. I go BKB this game, and I'll explain the BKB. I want BKB in this game because we don't have any good initiators, which means that somebody has to start the fight, and I'm okay with it being me. The only problem is their team's kind of hard to go in with, like I said before. So uh, with the BKB, I can just walk onto CM, Pango, Tiny, and I can just fight them. And they have to use their spells, and it allows me to get into the fight without putting myself at any risk whatsoever. So I get this BKB. We head up top. This guy dies. For free. And now I can just run him with my main Meepo. He uses roll. I'm gonna chase, he's gonna turn. I just press BKB. I chase him down. And now I can poof in, and the fight's over. We Roche. And now it's a GG. Hopefully that was somewhat simple, but main key objectives, like I've said in uh, the previous portion, is fight with your main Meepo, make them use spells, and then commit and kill them afterwards. Don't commit too soon. If you commit too soon, the games are going to get really hard. Because uh, they want to kill you. But if you're only playing with main Meepo, with a Manta, and Dragon Lance, if you go to Fusel, cool. Uh, it's hard for them to fight. So, yeah, uh, I'll go over some key counters now and kind of show how to play against them or explain, but uh, most of them are relatively the same. It's uh, it's pretty easy to win games consistently with this play style. Uh, I think, yeah, 78% win rate, 7.5k. Uh, you know, practice and keep working, and eventually you'll get to a point where you can pick Meepo every game and you'll consistently uh, maintain a high win rate and climb a lot of MMR. I always say, I'm an AK Meepo player. I am not an AK Dota player. <laughs> I'm pretty bad at every other hero, but this one I'm particularly pretty good at. So we'll go over key counters now. A 
I'm going to go over this somewhat quickly. These are some of the, I would say, more annoying heroes, not so much counters, but just heroes to keep an eye out for and to make sure you are uh, keeping track of what spells they have and don't have in a team fight before you commit. Wyvern with Curse, you know, wait them out, fight them with your Diffusal Manta, blink on them, hex them, kill them. Terrorblade, go for the True Strike talent on your net, because usually he goes Butterfly, he has Sunder. Uh, if you have Hex or if your team has stuns, you can kill him, but if not, you're going to have to fight him at the, at the end of the fight because if he sunders you and his team turns, you're going to die. Be aware of the sunder. Keep it in mind. Shadow Fiend's very, very annoying in the lane. Uh, he outdamages you. You're a melee hero, and you have no way to secure creeps without committing your hero. So the best thing to do against this hero in lane is accept that you're going to lose. You're going to lose the lane. It is what it is. Uh, buy some salves. Get your level 4 and, you know, ask for a gank or get the fuck out of there. Uh, don't feed to them. If you feed to them, the game gets hard. The worst thing you can do is try to win the lane in a losable, in an unwinnable lane, right? That goes for Shadow Fiend, Huskar, Batrider. Don't try to win these lanes. You lost. Uh, and then his ulti, just plain Hex, kill him or wait it out. Buy BKB if you have to. Just try to force it out. Don't want him to get Requiem off on all your Meepos. Venno, he has the Gale on his ultimate. For the Gale, you can just Manta it off. Not the best counter, but he is annoying. Enigma, Enigma Black Hole, same thing. He has the Black Hole. You need to keep an eye out for this and watch that. Either kill him at the beginning of the fight, or wait it out, or you know, kill his key, kill his teammates so that uh, he doesn't have enough damage to kill you. Troll, his ultimate, one of the few heroes that can man fight Meepo in a one v one due to his ult and his mischance. Always get True Strike on net, and uh, sometimes I go Halberd. Halberd, Scotty, Hex, these are all great items against him. Manta's good. Uh, in case you net your main meeple, you can Manta and get the fuck out of there. But, you know, for the most part, use your team to kill this guy. Ricky, his smoke's very obnoxious. He silences all of your meepos. It's like 70% mischance and you can't throw any nets. You're kind of just useless. Uh, usually against this guy, I go blink and play under a ward sentry and just try to blink Hex, kill him early. Or have my team catch him out or, you know, do whatever you can to stay out of that smoke. It's annoying. You know, keep it in mind. AA Ice Blast, a super underrated counter. He completely removes your third ability, and uh, you die very, very fast. You're, you're not as strong as you think you are. So definitely uh, definitely try not to get Ice Blast on all four Meepos. Play with the main. You know, play smart. Same for Warlock. He has his ult and Fatal Bonds. You don't want to get Fatal Bonds on all your Meepos. You don't want to get ulted on your, all your Meepos. Fatal Bonds can take it off the main Meepo, but not the others. So try to uh, wait out his spells. Underlord, he reduces your damage. He has AoE uh, percent base damage, so no matter how tanky you are, he does a fuck ton of damage to you, and he's hard to kill himself. Usually, you can just ignore him. If you need, you can go Silver Edge to kill him, but uh, as the game goes later, uh, he becomes more and more killable, but just kill him with your team early game and don't don't let him get a huge lead. Disruptor, this hero's good because he can uh, he can separate your Meepos if you're running. He can glimpse you back and force you to fight, so, you know, keep that in mind. Like any other hero. Shaker, another hero I don't consider very good against Meepo. He's too slow. Uh, if it's core Shaker, that's a different story. But most of the time, it's support. And his blink's at like 15, 20 minutes. So that point, you're tankier than his uh, Echo will allow. And just don't give him a four-man Echo on all your Meepos. And, you know, easy fight. Tiny Avalanche uh, just controls you during the fight. Watch out for that. Timbersaw, this hero does a lot of damage. And he's hard to kill, but... Depending on if you have higher net worth, this hero doesn't matter. If he's ahead, this hero is a really big pain in the ass, and you're going to need your team to bring him down. Make sure you go on Timber early. Do not let him get a good start. Hoodwink, Bushwhack is going to be annoying throughout the entire game because it's never ending. It's like a 10 second cooldown. Uh, try to kill her early. Chikiro, same story. He's going to dwindle you down slowly, and he's going to control you throughout the fight. So make sure you are uh, committing on him with your team and kill these supports. A lot of these heroes are not that hard to kill. You know, Wyvern, SF, Venno, Ricky, AA, Disruptor, Warlock, uh, Hoodwink, Jakiro, Enigma. Uh, all these heroes are pretty easy to kill. So as long as you just focus them in the fight and don't let them do what they want to do against you, uh, the game will be much easier. But if you ignore them and you focus on the wrong thing, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be a pain in the ass to deal with. So keep all these heroes in mind. Uh, I'll go on to, like, the real counters now. These are the heroes that I would consider Meepo's main counters, the heroes that I hate playing into personally. The heroes before, it's kind of whatever. You know, they're there, they're not there, whatever. It doesn't matter. But these heroes you will definitely notice in the game. Starting off with Lashrak, he's just stronger than you at all points. He's stronger than you in the laning phase. Uh, once he gets Bloodstone, it's almost impossible to kill him because he has infinite lifesteal off of 
your Meepos because the amount of damage he outputs in an AoE area, he's just unkillable. You need Blink Hex, Scotty, uh, uh, Mage Slayer, or just your teammate's help to bring him down. This here is a pain. I hate playing into it, and I ban Lesh every game. Next up is Huskar. Kind of the same story. Huskar is better than you at basically all stages of the game until you get to the very late game. Uh, he outpaces you uh, with the armlet timing. He has an AOE disarm, and he just does a ton of a ton of damage. He attacks super fast. He's a pain in the ass to deal with. I go Halibird a lot. I like Scotty. Um, basically anything that I can lock him down. Hex. He, he's just somebody hard to deal with. He outpaces you. Make sure you apply pressure to him early. He's weak early. So, you know, coordinate your team. Make sure you get ganks on him. Do not let him snowball to the point where he, uh, he can just run at your towers. Because at that point, there's nothing you can do. Third, Elder Titan. He's pretty good. Especially if it's a core ET. This hero is kind of a pain in the ass to go against because he essentially gets 1,500 damage from his spirit if he gets them on all your Meepos. He also gets magic or magic um, immunity from his Ags, which most ETs rush nowadays, and he has a cleave talent. This hero is a pain. Try not to give him a big uh, astral spirit and uh, try to kill him early. Try to stay the hell away from this guy. He's fast. Um, you know, Scotty's great, but you can't really mad fight him. He's got to die in a hex stun. Whatever you got to do to uh, to bring him down. Tinker. Tinker's definitely gotten a little bit worse against Meepo since they added the True Strike talent to the net. Because now you can fight him during his laser. But still, he does a ton of AoE damage. He's hard to catch. As well as the fact that he just he does so much damage. Um, he also has his stupid Defense Matrix spell which makes him even harder to lock down with nets and hex and such. But uh, not the worst. Not the best. You can kill him early and... You know, usually it takes a good tanker player to make it effective. Pangolier, this hero is great because his Q does a ton of damage. The disarm's a pain in the ass. Um, his role obviously is able to control all of your Meepos and it's on a super low cooldown. As well as the fact that even if you get on top of him, he can press his shield crash and it will give him 100% damage immunity because he has so many targets in your Meepos. Um, as well as the fact that even if you catch him in net, with the spells on CD, usually he has a shard to dispel the net and then Q away uh, with the Hex or really just any gold advantage and not giving him the uh, right opportunities that he's looking for, you can deal with this hero. And last off, the newest hero in the game, Primal Beast. This is probably the easiest one to deal with. Uh, before his BKB, you're pretty good against Primal Beast because you can stop him from moving with his Trample. But once he has BKB, once he gets a Sanchenkaya, once he gets a shard, his eggs, he does a ton of damage. It's hard to lock him down. Uh, he does like 15,000 damage in an AoE, but uh, it's definitely manageable. Just hex, blink, you know, same as all the others. Just uh, try to keep in mind that he's there and he's going to initiate on you from afar. And these would be the six heroes that I would definitely uh, reconsider picking Meepo into because they're just, uh, not only are they really good against Meepo, but they're hard to play against as well. It takes a lot of patience and your window for success is very small. So uh, definitely you know, try to get some practice in against them, but keep in mind that they are stronger than you at basically all phases of the game. Just some closing thoughts I had about speeding up the process of learning Meepo. I recommend for one, go into a a custom lobby with no bots and just practice your micro, practice spreading your meeples out and farming and hitting your item timings, uh, become more alert, uh, you know, get used to your hotkeys and all that. And then once you're ready to start playing ranked or normal matches, just start first picking meepo. First pick meepo like 20, 30 games in a row. And you're going to play against some of the worst counters and drafts you can possibly imagine. But uh, you're going to learn really fast. You're going to suffer. Your team will suffer. Uh, but at some point, you're going to see a sharp incline in your performance, and you're going to start uh, understanding what to do against these drafts. It's going to get very, very easy, and you'll start gaining MMR like crazy. If you enjoyed this video, if you made it all the way through, consider subscribing, dropping a like. I put a lot of effort into this. I'm still getting used to editing. I've never really done any editing before this, so hopefully it wasn't too bad. Uh, I also stream uh, most days of the week on Twitch. I'm at twitch.tv slash meeposki, so come by, say hi, and you know, drop a follow and hang out. We play a lot of Meepo. Currently, I'm playing Meepo every game, so I can get 7k MMR. We're working on it. It's a, it's a process. Way. 
So uh, come hang out. Come say hi. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something. And until the next one. Bye.